Chapel. Um, how have uh, Peter Woods and Trey Williams progressed uh, this week? How much have they been able to practice? Uh, just a little bit better each day. So still just Wednesday, and so they've made a little progression each day. And you know, we got still got a couple more days before we before we got to head up. Uh, we leave here, I think, at one on Friday. So every every day is going to help, and every minute. So they're progressing pretty good. Uh, Harris Harris Sewell ended up out snapping uh, Walker Parks at right guard. Was that uh, injury reasons, performance reasons, kind of kind of a mix? What went no, into just that? just trying. You know, this just probably how it worked out. Uh, we've been trying to, you know, really get Harris in there and trying to trying to have you know Walker on a little bit of a um, pitch count. You know, it's it's late in the season and you know he's got a lot of he's got a lot of things he's dealt with. So trying to trying to and Harris you know deserves to play so. Nothing more than that. Just how it kind of worked out, probably with the series that he was in there. And last one: um, How have you gone about kind of addressing the, the field goal blocking issues? Uh, and um, have you been kind of satisfied with the response there this week? Yeah, I mean, you know, just trying to make sure we get the right personnel that w with what we have, you know, with the with the players we're working with, and then just try to do a better job of coaching and teaching the, the technique and fundamentals that we need uh, to execute it. So that's been the that's been the main thing. <clears throat> Anybody else for coach? Just me and Chapel hey. tonight. Hey, Dabo, this is Larry. Oh, there's um, Larry. Sorry, I'm here. Um, I. I I couldn't find where Woods went out. I, do you know when and where? And I, I, usually yeah. you see when they get injured, but I didn't. I couldn't find yep. where that happened. Yep, I I know exactly where it was. Oh, is that a what do you call it? Um, proprietary. Yeah. Proprietary. That's right. Yeah. Yep. He uh, he he got. He was a a, a kick out block. And the guy kind of hit him with the top of his head. Really kind of dangerous on the guy that hit him, actually. Um, kind of hit him, kind of hit him, kind of high. And uh, so, and he, you know, he tried to kind of keep going a little bit, but it just didn't didn't feel right. Debbie, you said dangerous on the kick out. Um, different than the than the cup. I know you asked about the cup blocks. Yeah, earlier. I mean the kid, the kid that hit him just kind of lowered his head okay. and hit him, hit him, hit him. Uh, you know, in a, in a bad spot. <clears throat> on, a, on, on Wesco, um, what was it like to see him come back and, and play as well as he did um, on Saturday? It was great. Big shot in the arm for us. You know, great, great to get him back and, and not just get him back, but to see him, you know, make some really nice plays and, and, uh, and then not have any issues after the game. So he, he really felt, you know, really good on Sunday and has had another good week. So, I mean, he's, he's, He's uh, feels good, and it's, like I said, really, really big for us to get him back. Yeah, but I know you said uh, Khalil Barnes is is y'all's best option at nickel. I'm just curious, the safety spot opposite Mickens, um, what your evaluation of that, and how that plays into the priority on where to put Barnes, and just sort of maybe your thoughts on that. Yeah, we got good players there. I mean, we, we like we like our personnel. I mean, we're always evaluating. We got some young guys that we think are going to be really good in time that just need a little time in the program. Uh, a kid like Ricardo, we're really high on him. Uh, excited about his future. You know, Kylan's made a lot of really good plays for us. I mean, he's he, he's he, we just need him to be you know a little bit more consistent. He's just a redshirt sophomore. Uh, you know, still a young player. Uh, you know, Tyler uh, gives us a lot of, uh, you know, knowledge and wisdom and, and you know, he can definitely, uh, you know, play multiple positions for us. But, you know, we, we, we've got to be, we just got to be as consistent as we can be with whoever's out there. Um, but, you know, it's really about who we're playing, what their personnel is, what's their style of play. All those things kind of dictate, you know, week in and week out, you know, how we position our guys. Hey, Coach, it's David. I just wanted to check to see how practice has gone this week. Have you been satisfied with their focus? Has it been feisty, business as usual? Kind of how has it progressed? Yeah, it's been really good. Two good days. Uh, you know, I mean, Monday was a tough day. That's yeah, the first day we get with the players. Uh, but they've responded and, you know, had a, had a really good, you know, 
physical practice yesterday and today, and uh, so they've done a nice job. Hey, Dabo, this is uh, Darian Carter with the Greenville News. Uh, some of the players kind of mentioned that Peyton Page and Wade Woodass kind of stepped up as leaders after the Louisville game. I guess, how have you seen them kind of develop their voice and leadership this season and to help respond after the team's, team's loss on Saturday? Yeah, it's been a, you know, it's kind of what you see with a lot of guys, you know, they kind of, as they progress through the program and mature and gain confidence as a player, typically they gain a little more confidence, uh, you know, with their voice as well. And, you know that's certainly what you've seen with Wade. He's been a he's been a really really good player for us this year. Uh, and then Peyton Page has just been he's been awesome. I mean he's been very consistent for us all year. But he he showed a ton of leadership in the off season, and he's really carried that all the way through. Uh, you know to to today. So I'm really proud of him. Uh, Wade's a guy that kind of a quiet guy coming in. But, you know, he's had a lot of success in his first couple of years, and now he's really asserted himself as a guy that, that knows that he's highly respected. And um, so, you know, he's, he's you know, taking, taking his opportunities as they've come to, to really be a good, uh, you know, vocal leader for us, both those guys. Yeah, but do you all have a feel for whether – Tootin and drones are going to play, or y'all just guessing? I just, we just assume they're going to play. Uh, you know, I'd be surprised if they didn't. So we, we just assume they are. And, and you know, whether they play or not, they're going to do what they do. So we got to, you know, you got to, you got to, you know, you're not going to do anything different. You got to get ready for for what they do. You know, back that backup back's really good. The backup quarterback's really good. So you know they. We just trying to get ready for Virginia Tech, and uh, you know whoever they run out there, you got to stop them. So it doesn't matter. You got to you got to be ready to go. Yeah, but um, Aiden Swanson's uh, punts inside the twenty are, are down a good bit from last year. Is there anything to that? Is that frequency of punts, or what, what do you think kind of goes into a statistic like that? I think he's at four this year and had, had twenty eight last year. Oh, definitely frequency of punts for sure. Um, you know we've been a. We've scored a lot more points than we did last year, so for sure, frequency of punts. You know, we didn't score many points last year. Uh, I think we're maybe fifth in the nation in scoring. I think something like that, uh, or top ten somewhere. So he just hadn't had as many opportunities, and I'm happy about that. <laughs> hey, Dabo. And uh, K had, a, I think, a career high 56 passing attempts. Um, just after the game, uh, did K kind of show any, I guess, soreness or after on Sunday or Monday, just coming in for some film study and things like that? No. I mean, if anything, just because he played 102 snaps or whatever it was. And I mean, he just played up 102 snaps of football. So uh, I don't think he was any issues as far as, uh, you know, he could have thrown 50 more if he needed to. I don't think there was any problems with that. But. I think just the wear and tear of the game, you know, uh, eight games in the season, a very physical game, and um, you know, that's that's just what everybody deals with this time of year.